In this first module of Chapter 3 on Mortality, Module 3.1, I will cover mortality concepts and why they are so important in actuarial analysis. Mortality modeling and the concepts of actuarial aging, relative risk, odds ratio, sex mortality differentials, cause-specific and all-cause mortality, and average lifetime mortality are all based on risk concepts involving death. Indeed, mortality is the single most important concept in actuarial analysis because it quantifies risk of dying. Although the life table parameters such as cohort and period survival, LX and PX, the death distribution, DX, and expectation of life, EX, are all computed using the same data. It is the risk of dying, QX, that underlies all of these actuarial metrics. Consider the age-specific survival versus the complementary age-specific mortality probabilities in this table, each of which is given as percentages rather than as fractions. Note the first column, we have ages 10, 20, 50, and 85 years. Then in the next set of columns is survival. You see that the one year probability uh, of survival for each of these ages is 99.99, 99.9, .9, 99, and 90% for ages 10, 20, 50, and 85 years, respectively. The ratio of these probabilities for 20, 50, and 85 relative to the probability of surviving at age 10 are all roughly 1. In other words, these differences in survival real, reveal little about actuarial differences across these ages. In contrast, view this next pair of columns for mortality. We see that one-year mortality is 0.01%, 0.1%, 1% and 10% respectively for 10, 20, 50, and 85 years. Thus, the ratios of the probability of dying in a one-year interval of 20, 50, and 85 relative to the one-year interval at age 10 are 10, 100, and 1,000 respectively. In other words, an individual has 1,000 times greater probability of dying in the one-year age interval from 85 to 86, as does an individual in the one-year interval from 10 to 11. These differences in mortality relative to differences in survival, where we saw that the relative ratios were around 1, captures the reason why understanding mortality is fundamental to actuarial analysis. There are four basic reasons why understanding mortality is important. First, death is an event indicating a change of state from living to dead, a failure of the system. In contrast, survival is a non-event in as much as it is a continuation of the current state. Second, death can be disaggregated by cause. This disaggregation can shed light on the biology, ecology, and epidemiology of deaths, the frequency distribution of causes, and the likelihood of dying of a particular cause by age and sex. This concept of cause obviously does not apply to survival. That is, there is no such thing as a cause of survival. It is a non-concept. Third, age-specific mortality is mathematically, as distinct from biologically, independent of demographic events at other ages. In contrast, Cohort survival to age X, LX, is conditional upon survival to each of the previous ages. Similarly, the value of life expectancy at age X, EX, depends on mortality at each of the remaining ages. And the fraction of all deaths, DX, that occur, occur at young ages will determine how many individuals remain to die at older ages. Thus, unlike age patterns of cohort and period survival, death distribution, or expectation of life, the age patterns of mortality reveal directly changes in risk. The last reason why mortality is important is because there are many mathematical models of mortality that describe different age patterns and from which other actuarial statistics are derived, such as survival and expectation of life. Many of these models are fundamental 
and are therefore used in both analysis of mortality data as well as predictions of future survival and life expectancy. I will present several of these mortality models in a subsequent module in this chapter. This ends Module 3.1 on the introduction to mortality and why this actuarial concept is so important. I will continue with an explanation of discrete mortality measures in the next module.